Thank you for joining us tonight at 10. I'm Sarah Bakowitz here with meteorologist Corral Ortiz because as everyone in Arkansas has noticed by now, we had some severe weather throughout the state today. Oh yeah, absolutely. We saw everything from large destructive hail, damaging winds, and we even had a brief tornado warning earlier this evening. So it's been quite the busy day for many across the state and the night is still not over. Yep, and when we first started hearing signs of power outages and everything like that, Conway was one of the first cities to set up their emergency operations after the storm passed them. THV 11's Julissa Garza is there now. Julissa, what does the damage look like there? Yeah, Sarah, as you can imagine, a lot of the city without power, even where we are at Ida Burns Elementary, right on Lee Avenue, the entire neighborhoods around us without power and a lot of debris on the ground, tree limbs. Uh, but I want to give you a better idea of the damage we saw. If we can go ahead and take the video of some of the damage that that photojournalist Danny and I came across. The first thing we saw, um, a woman in her yard told us she was grilling earlier today. And by the end of the evening, a tree had fallen on her car. She was surprised, taken back, still without power. And as we continued driving through the city, we saw more of that same situation. We also stumbled upon different crews working to clear the roads, pick up all of those trees that were knocked down, pick up the debris. We also saw power crews working to get power back on. We've seen people walking around. Someone even asked us if we had any idea as to when they'll see the, their power come back on. But we did talk to the mayor earlier today. We want to go ahead and take a listen to what he had to say. We were very blessed that there were not more injuries with this. But if everyone want to be patient, uh, Conway Corporate will get the power restored. We're going to work on getting streets open tonight, and then we will start working on debris removal and cleanup tomorrow. The mayor does tell me that so far there has only been one report of an injury. It was a minor injury, and they're hoping that it stays that way. But I want to give you kind of a better idea of how much they've gotten to clean up. Here on Lee Avenue was this entire tree behind me. And as you heard the mayor, he said their goal tonight was to clear these roads, get them back open. And part of Lee Avenue is closed where we're standing. But you can see just an hour ago, this entire tree was blocking this road. So they're definitely working fast and asking everyone at home to have some patience. Sarah, I'm going to go and toss it back to you in the studio and we'll check back in with you later. All right, thank you, Jalissa. And right now in Arkansas, almost 150,000 Arkansans are without power just after today's storms. Oh yeah, absolutely. We've had quite a lot of reports of storm damage across the state. Really strong wind gusts. I do feel it was the main culprit behind a lot of the power outages that we've had uh, earlier this evening. The winds well. were so strong actually that over in North Little Rock, they had more power outages tonight than they did from the March tornado. It's crazy to think. I mean, 150,000 across the state. This is the latest numbers right now. Uh, look at Lowenoke County, almost 80 to 90% of that county there is dealing with power outages. We have a huge number here in Pulaski as well. So we're going to continue to just keep you updated in terms of those power outages. Not something we want to hear, especially when it's been very hot. It's been it's still very warm and muggy out there and hopefully it doesn't take much uh, time to help with the recovery of those outages, especially with more heat in the forecast. But this is the latest on our radar. We are seeing most of the activity continue to push through our south. The southern half of the state now is starting to deal with the brunt of the storms. We're watching this one severe uh, thunderstorm warned storm uh, for parts of Grant, Hot Springs, Saline counties. That is until 1045. Lots of lightning within this storm. We even had a lot of hail being reported as large as ping pong size hail, but also wind gusts played a huge role uh, with a lot of the damage. Matter of fact, here's a look at our highest wind gusts on record at the bottom. We're tied for fifth because we reached 69 we recorded 69 uh, mile per hour wind gusts at the Little Rock Airport earlier this morning as that storm tracked across the county. So the most recent highest wind gust was back in 2011 at 77. So it's been very active. Matter of fact, they continued to expand that severe thunderstorm watch. They pushed it a couple more hours until 12 a.m. for parts of South Central Arkansas and South Southeast Arkansas until 2 o'clock in the morning. So so we're going to continue to provide you updates, have a better look at some of the damage across the state. A full check of that forecast is coming just ahead. 
And Arkansas isn't the only state dealing with severe weather. Several homes were damaged or destroyed in Indiana after they had a tornado. I want you to take a look at this in Greenwood, Indiana. You can see the tornado begin to form over an apartment complex. Luckily, most of the buildings are still under construction and there were no injuries from this particular storm. Over 24,000 people, however, are without power in Indiana. On top of all these storms, extreme heat continues here in Arkansas. And to try to help out with that, a couple of cities in central Arkansas opened up their cooling centers. Over in North Little Rock earlier today, people made their way out to the community center to get out of that heat. And at the Capitol, the East Little Rock Community Center was open, trying to help everyone limit their time outside. Now, meteorologist Corrales Ortiz has been talking about how hot it's been. Now, when it gets this hot out, it can be dangerous, right? Yeah, absolutely. Arkansas is in full swing and with the threat of more of this ex ex excessive heat in the forecast for the upcoming week. Just a reminder for a few heat safety tips. Make sure to limit time outside when possible. And if you are outside for long periods of time, wear light clothing, hydrate or plenty of sunscreen. Of course, think of your pets, especially on the hot pavements. Make sure they have plenty of water and be mindful or looking out for the signs of heat stroke or exhaustion that could include cramps, headaches, dizziness or just sweating a bit too much. Of course, have a full check of your forecast talking more about this heat. All right, thanks, Carlos. Now you talked about pet safety there and how hot is too hot for your dogs to go out? Well, experts say as low as 80 degrees could be too hot for dogs paws. Concrete and asphalt can often be 20 to 30 degrees hotter than the actual temperature outside, and it only takes a dog's paws 60 seconds to begin burning on an 80 degree day in some cases. It's not just their paws, it's just the danger of getting overheated as well that we have to be careful about with these guys. Dr. Greenwood recommends walking your dog early or later in the evenings or walking them in shaded areas, limiting sun exposure and using dog shoes. If a dog stumbles or limps when walking, licks its paws or has blisters, redness or a darker tone on their padding, it could have burned its paws. And there are ways for you to keep cooler this summer too. This tweet, shared more than 100 times, suggests people set their ceiling fans to spin counterclockwise for optimal cooling. But does that work? Let's verify. Our sources are the U.S. Department of Energy, Energy Star, and Home Depot. Both Energy Star and Home Depot agree. Spinning ceiling fans in a counterclockwise direction for a cooling effect in the summer works. So we can verify this as true. According to the DOE, this fan trick will allow you to raise the thermostat setting about four degrees Fahrenheit with no reduction in comfort. And that could save you money. Another hot tip, in the winter, make sure to revert your ceiling fan settings back to clockwise for a warming effect. With your fast facts, I'm Ariane Daytil. Tonight, Bill Clinton is back in Little Rock. The former president and Arkansas governor sat down with former Maryland governor Larry Hogan at the State House Convention Center. They shared their thoughts on civility, inclusive leadership, and bridging political divides. Clinton also spoke about how the political field has changed since his time in office. And we have now also learned that Little Rock civil rights activist Robert Say McIntosh has passed away. He came to fame in the 70s and 80s with Say's Stop the Violence organization. He also started the Say McIntosh Foundation. Say was one of Bill Clinton's biggest challengers. And here at home, he was also well known for his sweet potato pie fundraisers in the community. He was 79. Tensions remain high in Russia following that attempted uprising by Vladimir Putin's own mercenaries. Christian Benavidez reports. In the city of Rostov-on-Don in the south of Russia, locals cheered Wagner mercenaries after that attempted uprising, which challenged Vladimir Putin's army leaders. The paramilitary group was ordered back to their base camps in Ukraine after Belarus worked out a truce between Putin and Wagner's leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin. The rising storm of uh, Prigozhin uh, inside of Russia is something that uh, many people have seen over, over months now. Uh, direct challenges to the leadership, to the military leadership, now questioning the very premises of the of the war. Prigozhin's mercenary group has fought fiercely for Russia in Ukraine, but a rift has been growing. Anger over a lack of supplies and claims that a Russian airstrike targeted a Wagner camp. 
Prigozhin says his private military was just a hundred miles outside of Moscow when a deal was worked out with no bloodshed. Sixteen months ago, Russian forces were on uh, the doorstep of Kyiv in Ukraine, thinking they'd take the city in a matter of days, thinking they would erase Ukraine from the map as an independent country. Now, over this weekend, uh, they've had to defend Moscow, Russia's mm -hmm. capital, against mercenaries of Putin's own making. On state TV, Putin said Prigozhin was a traitor and vowed punishment, but the deal worked out will keep Prigozhin in exile in Belarus, with criminal charges in Russia dropped. The entire ordeal has put the strength of Putin's power into question. Cristian Benavides, CBS News. Compensating student athletes for their name, image, and likeness. Well, after the break, how an era of social media is ushering in new career opportunities for college bound competitors. But first, checking in again, Corrales, what's the latest? Well, although we're seeing a lull in the activity here in the metro, other parts of the state still dealing with severe storms in the area. I'll have the latest on that, letting you know when we can see that come to an end and what else is in store for the upcoming week, which includes the excessive heat that's coming up.